Hey, how's it going guys? For today's video, we are going to end up doing a hitting tips 2.0. Now, as a little bit of a disclaimer, we will be talking about things that I may have touched upon in my last hitting tips video. The link for that will be in the description down below as well. No need to worry. There will be a lot of new things that we do touch upon in this video as well. Things of which players maybe have that better swing, what swings to put on a creative player, why, and just go down a whole list and even some things that I use in game. Just so you know that this is legit. Obviously, this is my main account, McGunsky. Of course, that is the name of this channel. But I do have a 349 average, 672 slugging, 373 on base. My ERA is actually a little bit better than I thought it was ever going to be. And with this average of a 349, that is the second best in World Series right behind Rebel. Before we get into any of these details, I do want to say that, again, I have partnered with Pruzy. They are like a Costco, but better. They have things like sunglasses, watches, clothes, sporting apparel, and most of them are up to 80% off. The lowest that I've seen is 20% off. Go ahead and check them out. Great attire, great sportswear, great everything. The link will be in the description down below. So one of the most important things that you could do when it comes to improving your hitting is doing challenge of the week. You can also do batting practice, which is another mode. But for me, like I said in the last video, it still is challenge of the week. As you see, I'm number one on this leaderboard. I haven't played challenge of the week in a a good maybe two months but this is the first time that i did it on my first try I ended up with 1,610,897 points now the sole purpose of challenge of the week is simply just to continue to go up the rankings and if you don't know it's a pretty dynamic mode what i mean by dynamic mode is as you progress the difficulty will go from rookie to veteran to all-star to hall of fame and then to legend obviously the goal is to stay on legend for as long as you can and build up those points with challenge of the week there's actually rewards that you can receive first place and i haven't won first place this year because like i said i really haven't been on challenge of the week that much but i am going to change that up because again it actually helps me even stay more consistent so if this was earlier on in the year first place through third place will usually have a baseball that's signed by pick pretty much anybody and then you can also win a ken griffey sign bat or a jersey but because it's a little bit later on in the year first place if you haven't won any signed memorabilia throughout the whole entirety of this year you could get a ken griffey jr signed baseball and then second through third which you can always win as long as it's not a signed piece second through third and i think it's all the way through 100 win different stub amounts so just as a little show of it if you go through the rules and go down to prizes this is what it shows as i said first place you get a ken griffey jr autograph signed baseball second place is 30k subs third place is 25k subs fourth through 10th is 15k subs 11th through 20th is 10k 21st through 40th is still 5k stubs but 41st through 100th you get an exclusive challenge of the week card pack which i'm assuming is just your everyday pack so another way that you can also warm up or try and get better at the game is custom practice now again i will say i do recommend challenge of the week for this purpose but for me right now just as a tutorial i'm going to use custom practice with custom practice you can choose whatever team you want so whatever pitcher that you think you struggle with or if you want to see someone with higher velocity you choose that team and then use a the batter that you want to use so for me right now because i know the yankees have a really good bullpen i'm going to go ahead and let the yankees pitch to me and i'll be the angels now in my last video i talked about a timing mechanism where you use a click 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 method and let me go ahead and put this on legend that way we could definitely show you what it's like all right so like i said it is using a click 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 method what it is is the separation of the hand so that's the first click drop of the foot is the second click and then the timing of the sinker or the fastball whichever that pitcher's main pitch is as long as it's not the curveball that'll be the timing of the third click as you get used to this method it is something you don't need to do anymore it'll just always be in the back of your head for me, honestly, I don't use it all that often anymore unless I'm really in a slump. But like I said, the more you use it, the less you actually at the end of the whole process, you need to use it. So like I said, it's a separation of the hands, drop of the foot. So there's a click, click, click on the third one is the timing of that fastball. I think it's a sinker, if I'm not mistaken. We did get a little bit on top of that. Now, where you start your PCI, it doesn't necessarily matter. I know a lot of people are more comfortable starting up and in, but my issue with that has always been... I will slam the PCI and I know one of the questions that I see all the time is how do I refrain from jamming the PCI down or jamming it up? The best way to do that is just be smooth. Now that sounds 
really obvious and maybe maybe even a little bit insincere but that it is as simple as that focus on not jamming it side to side be smooth and fluid with it the more that you play the game the more that you will get the understanding and feeling of the pci and what maybe even works for you um for me like i said on the higher difficulties i am a little bit more jumpy with my pci to catch up with the speeds but on the lower difficulties it's just smooth as just moving it around being there waiting for a pitch that maybe encompasses the middle of the plate but on the higher difficulties you'll see me get a little bit more jumpy and move it around just so i can still maintain really good timing on any pitch that's near the zone when it comes to adjusting to off speed pitches whether it's a change up curveball slider it all at this point is on you it's about recognizing the pitch going with it and understanding the timing of that said pitch the way you'll understand that timing is just by playing the game there's no secret to that method it's just the more you see the pitches and understand the break of the ball and how you see it in the game you will make that adjustment for me like i said i do start my pci low and in with the lefties and even if it's a righty i will start it low and in and to show you i'll go ahead and use mike trout right now regardless of who's on the mound the click 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 method is all the same as separation of hands a drop of the pitcher's foot and timing of that fastball as you see right there worked out really well we might have just hit a home run and it ends up being a deep fly out but again, it's going to be good on there. You see it good squared up and that's what matters. Just to reiterate something, it does not matter what the pitcher's timing is in terms of his separation of hands and foot because they all do the same thing. It's separation of hands, drop of the foot to the timing of the fastball. So we'll go ahead and use somebody else to display that. So as a quick reference point on Tanaka, it would be right now, click, click, click so that you'll see and hear the difference of the clicks and hopefully that makes more sense to you. So we're gonna go ahead and bring out Patances and just to show you, it's gonna be, wait on it, click, click, click. It's faster because his pitch speeds are faster, but also his whole motion to the plate is also quicker. Click, click, click. Okay, so now that I've got that in my head, we're gonna go ahead and get ready for it, show it on display. Click, click, click. That was a pitch definitely well out of the zone. If we did straighten that out a little bit, we did get ourselves a home run. Click, click, click. And that is an absolute screamer foul. Click, click, click. And that is an absolute no doubt shot this time. We straightened it out. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about things that are going to be more meaningful to you that you may not even think about. One thing I do want to touch upon real quick is just some of the settings that I use and some of the equipment that I use as well. Some of the equipment that I use that I feel like is probably pretty necessary when you get on the higher end of the difficulties like Hall of Fame and Legend is Control Freaks. I'll put a link in the description down below as well. So what a Control Freak is, is it is something that goes over your PS4 controller analog stick and it helps give you more accuracy whether it's with pitching or hitting. Control Freaks have a bunch of variety and different choices when it comes to their products the difference between concave and convex convex is very similar to the ps4 controller but it still is useful but what concave is it's like an xbox controller where it gives your thumb a place to sit that being said for me i like the convex feel because i originally did come from xbox so it is a comfort level for me but also I like having that place for my thumb to sit. I feel like it gives me more control of my PCI and also when I'm pitching more control of that as well. Other things to note that would help you that are just things that are almost add-ons that aren't necessarily in-game adjustments that you can make. Having a monitor that's a one millisecond time is huge. It's very critical, especially again on Hall of Fame and Legend. There's plenty of monitors that won't break the bank. One that I highly recommend is a BangQ. Those are about $150 on Amazon. The way you spell BangQ is just B-E-N-Q. Again, you can find them on Amazon for about 150 bucks. Won't break the bank and it's a well worth investment if you're trying to get better at the game now when it comes to the user settings one thing that is important that i feel like everyone should play on if they're trying to be more competitive is the hitting view of at least any of the strike zones i preferably would use strike zone that's just the default one but there is strike zone two three and strike zone high but like i said for me strike zone it's the best one and it's pretty clear when it comes to pci appearance you can be selective however i still think that there's only two that are the best pci appearances it's going to be reticle or wedge if you're a little bit newer at the game i would recommend wedge because it gives you a little dot in the middle of the pci that gives you an extra focus point reticle for me or if you're and we'll call it a little bit more advanced reticle would be the better one to use because you get to see the pitch a little bit better 
and you already kind of know where to put the PCI. So one thing that I feel like a lot of content creators when they give out hitting tips don't necessarily touch upon is actually players with good swings. Why this may be important is it's a mental clock in your head. If you saw one of my last videos, which was the Justin Upton debut, you probably heard me that I didn't necessarily like his card because how late his leg kick was and how it was affecting my timing just mentally. So using cards with really good swings that fit your mental timing is very important and not really again spoken about so for me all these cards that you see that are used on my team if i'm going to be competitive with duke snyder through tony gwen all the way to my cap they all have a swing where their leg kick comes up before the pitch or right as the pitch is about to be thrown so it doesn't throw off my timing frank thomas has an early load roberto alomar has an early load as well ripkin has an early load Hornsby has an early load. Duke has a fairly early load, but it's a tad bit later than most of my team. Willie Mays has a great load and Tony Gwen as well. Amazing load. Ron Jeremy swing, which is my created player, is Roberto Alomar's swing. The reason why it is that way, Alomar is my best hitter. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the one you need to use. You need to find your best or favorite hitter in the game. Some may, may be Lindor. For others, it may be Frank Thomas. Finding one that's preferably probably a switch hitter because their animations will be better on both sides of the plate as opposed to just going with one that's Duke Snyder where him as a right-handed swinger may not adjust all that well. That's important. Now, if you're playing Battle Royale, there is going to be a little bit of a different way you approach it, but I'm going to be talking about this as if it's ranked seasons because I feel like that's what we mostly play. If you're in the first inning, taking pitches is definitely something that I recommend. Getting the timing down, seeing all the pitchers' pitches, it's almost like it's a real game. These are all things that if you had a good coach that they would tell you. If it's your first at bat and if you haven't seen that pitcher before, odds are take first pitch unless you feel like you really got a good timing on them. So for me, what I do again in the first inning Typically, if it's a pitcher that is at least new to me, if I've seen uh, Burt Blylevin, I already understand his timing windows. I got him down. Again, go down that list. If you play the game enough, odds are, unless it's a brand new card, you've seen a lot of these pitchers before, so you already have the timing down. But again, treating this like it is a new person, that first inning, you just approach it that way, where it's, hey, first pitch, going to take. And you're probably going to do that for the first three batters, not just if it, as if it's yourself in real life. But you're going to take that first pitch, see that fastball. Odds are you're going to come back with a changeup or off speed. And you get to see it and recognize the break on the ball and also the speed differential and get that timing down. With that all being said, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. I will at some point later in the year do a hitting tips 3.0. I did brush up on a lot of these things just to add a little bit more information or maybe even have changed a couple of things from my experiences with this game. Again, the link to the first hitting tips video will be in the comment section down below as well as Pruzzi's link. Like I said, it's like a Costco, but with better prices. Thank you all for watching today's video. If you're looking forward to a pitching tips video, again, let me know in the comment section down below or if there's maybe tips towards Battle Royale or something else that you're looking for. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys very much.